Hello students, so this is Brox Gags and I'm going to create uh, this short video showing how to use Sage in order to solve a system of linear equations. And we're going to start very, very simple. Uh, just go a two by two system here where the unknowns, as you can see, are x and y. And the uh, equations are x plus y is equal to 5 and x minus 2y is equal to 8. And here I'll increase the text size a little bit to make sure we can see online. And so, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that x and y are both symbolic variables that I can solve for. And so I'll do that by just typing in var. Um, I believe x would have been there by default, but I'll just go ahead and do x comma y there uh, so that I know x and y are both symbolic variables. So that doesn't throw an error when I go to solve. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and just plot um, what those graphs look like. And so that way we have a rough idea of what we expect the solution to be uh, because you know this very simple problem, a uh, two-dimensional problem here, it's basically going to be the intersection of these two lines as the ordered pair that is the solution. And so here I'll just quickly go say the plot P1 is equal to the plot. Um, I'll do some rearranging in my head and say that's just 5 minus X and I'll plot it between 0 and 10. And I'll do the same thing for the other one. Uh, that'd be x minus 8 over 2 over the same interval. And here, just to show it apart, we'll go ahead and change the color of the second plot. And we'll use show here to superimpose those together. And so uh, those look good. Um, we've got the x plus y equals 5 in blue, and x minus 2y equals 8 in red there. And so uh, we're looking at for the intersection. It looks like it's about here, and so x is going to be close to 6, and the y is going to be close to negative 1, if not exactly on there. And so uh, now we have a idea in mind of what we think it's going to be close to at least. Um, let's go ahead and use the solve tool in order to solve it. And so how do you do that? Well, there is a command or function called solve. And so if you don't know the syntax for it, um, you just find the keyword here. If you just hit S dash, of course, you've got a lot of them. Um, you can narrow it in a little bit closer to go SOL dash in. Hey, there's solve right there. We'll go ahead and hit both the question marks and evaluate that cell to get the documentation for it. And here we'll just stop at the first example here. Uh, so you've got x and y are symbolic variables. Solve. Notice I'm opening the parentheses and then I've got a square bracket that opens up. x plus y is equal to 6 and x minus y is equal to 4. So we're just going to have different equations in here. And then we're going to have a closed square bracket, a comma, and then the variables we're solving for in parentheses there. Uh, so that should be a, a fairly easy syntax to follow. And so let's go ahead and try that here. Oops, lost my plot. There's the plot. And so we'll say solve and then open parentheses. I'll hit the square bracket. You can see it shows uh, both the open and close square bracket there, which is nice. Uh, so the equation was x plus y. Now notice here, instead of just a single equal sign, I'm going to put a double equal sign there. That is important. Uh, so you need to be sure you hit the double equal sign here. That's kind of a conditional equal sign there, whereas the single is assignment, like I'm going to assign the variable x to equal 5. And so a little bit different there in terms of the interpretation. And the second one, x minus 2y is equal to 8. And notice the comma separating them here. And I believe there was a comma. And then what am I solving for is the question. Well, I'm solving for x and y here. And so if I just hit shift enter, notice that gives us the solution here, x equals 6 and y is equal to negative 1. And so if I'm just reading it off there, um, I can very easily see that x is 6 and y is negative 1. Um, one thing you might also be worried about as well, um, what if I get into more complex problems and, it's much, and there's more than just two equations here, maybe there's 20 equations. I don't really want to have to type them all in these square brackets just like that. And so there is a way to do that. Uh, the easier way would be to have variable story equations. And so to do that, we can do things like equation one here is x plus y is equal to equals to five. And equation two is equal to x minus 2 times y 
and that's equal to 8. Notice here I'm using the double equal sign here in the actual writing of the equation, and then I'm using the single equal sign here to assign those equations to a variable. And so then I can do the same thing. I can say solve, open the square bracket here. I can just type in EQ1 and EQ2 uh, for my two equations, and then again solve for X and Y. And notice I get the exact same answers here. Uh, you might ask, well, what if I want to use these somehow, like store those in a variable? Uh, that gets a little bit more complicated, but we can do it all the same. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll say, okay, the solution is equal to this. And so now if I type in something like this, at first it's not going to show anything, right? Uh, because all it's doing is taking the solution of it and storing it in SOLN. And so if I want to, I can come down here and say, well, show me that. And so I'll just type in show. And you can see x is 6 and y is negative 1. And so now at least we have this thing in a variable called SOLN. Uh, but what is SOLN? Well, one thing I could do is say, what's the type? The type of the solution is a class, and it's a sequence here. And so uh, notice there's kind of two sets of square brackets here. And so one way you can access the individual elements of that is through some subscripts, if you will, kind of notation. And so one thing I could do is say, um, solution underscore x is equal to the solution 0, 0, two sets of square brackets. And then I could show, show solution underscore x. And notice it shows x equals 6. And I can do a very similar thing for the y except for here, instead of this zero here, think of this zero getting me into the first set, and the second zero here is the second zero for x, it would be the second zero would become a one. Oops. Let's go back to Sage Math Cloud here. Here we go. And then the second zero would need to be a one in order to access the, the y part of that. And I'll go ahead and show that as well. But you're just like, well, that's getting closer, but I don't really need x equals and y equals, right? Well, one thing you could do is just show it again. Type, what is the type now of solution, underscore x? It's an expression. Well, expressions have left and right-hand sides. And so I can say, well, take just the right-hand side of this expression. And so I can hit dot. And if I hit dot and just hit tab, I can get all of the methods of this expression. And so one of the methods is RHS. And so... If I didn't know that, I could say RHS there, just hitting tab, auto-completes it. And I'll do that to both of them, and you'll see what we get. Oh, solution is not defined. And you say, well, solution is defined right here. So let's try one thing. Um, when this type of thing happens, the first thing I do is I hit Control-A to select the entire worksheet, and then hit Run and I get a bunch of gibberish here. And so we're getting closer though, even though it might not look like it. And so let's do one thing. We'll comment out both of those lines. And so here I've got just the assignment here. We can check it real quick. And now let's say type again of solution of x. A built-in method or function. Oops, forgot my brackets there. Come back up, type solution underscore x. Now we're still at an expression, but this should be something we can actually use here. And so now let's do something like print solution of x plus string solution of x. And now notice I'm able to say, hey, the solution of x is 6 and the solution of y is negative one in a description there. And so hopefully this helps you get a feel for the syntax in solving your system of equations there. Uh, it's not quite as clean as it would be nice. Um, it's very easy to get to this point, but then if you want to get uh, the elements out of that, uh, this is the best way that I've found to do it is with the solution, 
setting it equal to the solution variable, and then using these indices in order to get the particular ones there. If there was a third one, it would be 0, 0, 0,02 in square bracket notation, just like this. And then, of course, we're printing it to the screen at this point in this output cell. Uh, here is just a text. Notice I've included the space, plus str is the cast to a string, so I can print it. And then here's our solution of x and our solution of y there. And so hopefully this helps you solving your systems of equations. Thank you for watching the video.